Thus far, we've talked about both the static and dynamic properties of the building blocks. What I'd like to do in this video is show you a couple of analogies between apparently different structures that can be understood using the building block formalism. So, moving forward, we won't make direct appeal to the building block formalism in a lot of cases, but if you're able to recognize common generalized building blocks in different structures, you'll be able to see similarities that would otherwise remain hidden, and this makes the job of learning organic chemistry much easier. So I'd like to begin by talking about the borane functional group, which includes boron. And boranes are most famous in the context of hydroboration reactions. By treating a, an alkene with a borane, followed by oxidation, you can create alcohols from alkenes. But at any rate, the borane functional group is three R groups, which we assume connect to the boron through a carbon atom, and these can be pretty much anything, with a boron atom at their center. Looking at the borane just from first principles, what we can notice is that the central boron atom, which is really the, the interesting atom here, is an example of the generalized building block that has a total electron count of six, and we've seen this in a couple of other places already. Now, in thinking about how the borane might react, we can either start from this generalized building block, or we can draw an analogy to something that most of you have more than likely seen in organic one already, which is the carbocation. And so if we look at the carbocation, it's got a similar structure, actually, of three R groups around a central carbon atom in a trigonal planar geometry with a positive charge at the center. And again, abstracting out what the generalized building block is here, what we see is that it's exactly the same. It is a central atom with six total electrons around it. And remember that we don't really care about the charge. All we need to recognize is the three electron pair domains and the three single bonds around that central atom X. So these two functional groups share a common generalized building block. And that's interesting because both actually undergo the same kinds of reactions under certain conditions. So for example, when you put a borane in the presence of a good nucleophile, let's say an alkoxide, for example, with a, with a negatively charged oxygen in it, what you see is that the negatively charged oxygen can coordinate to the boron atom in the exact same way as a general electron source can coordinate to the central atom of the six electron building block, which we've seen already. And naturally, the same reactivity goes for the carbocation functional group. So if we could get an alkoxide in the presence of a carbocation, then the coordination of that alkoxide to the carbocation is something that we should expect to occur. And the resulting products also are analogous. And so the product of coordination to the carbocation would give us a new ether. And the product of coordination to the borane actually gives us a new boron oxygen bond. But the boron, like the central carbon of the other product, is tetrahedral. So in both cases, we go from a trigonal planar geometry to a tetrahedral geometry. The fundamental reactivity is the same. In both cases, it's the coordination of an electron source, or what we call a nucleophile, to the central unsaturated or six electron atom. Let's look at another analogy now. The amide functional group is one you may have heard of. It's a carbonyl group, CO double bond, associated with a nitrogen atom, and I'll just draw generalized R groups off of this amide. And I want to compare it to a functional group that is similar in name, but a little bit different structurally called the amidine functional group. And the amidine has a carbon-nitrogen double bond associated with some R group there, singly bound to a nitrogen, and then another group off of the carbon like so. Now, the amide and the amidine are both interesting because compared to their nitrogen-free analogs, the aldehyde here and an imine, these are less susceptible to attack by a nucleophile or an electron source. 
to see why we can recognize a common building block pattern associated with both of these structures. And what we can see is that we have a heteroatom with a lone pair, two R groups, attached to a central atom with a double bond and two single bonds, our old friend that we've seen in, in several places already, and then a third atom that either possesses two lone pairs or a lone pair and a single bond. I'll just abbreviate that as our old friend, the double bond with two either single bonds or lone pairs. So this structural pattern, and in particular, the three X atoms all connected to one another occurs in both the amide and the amidine. And perhaps most importantly of all, the resonance that we see in the generalized form, which I'll just, cutting out everything that we don't need, I'll draw like this, this kind of resonance shows us that the central atom is less electrophilic, not quite as good of an electrophile as we would expect if the donating X atom or the electron source were not there. Recognizing the similarity between the amidine and the amide was really a matter of recognizing this common building block. Just like in the previous example, the commonality between the borane and the carbocation really boils down to their identical generalized building block, a central atom with only six total electrons.